to a well-designed business. My name is Luann Nigara, and I'm so glad you found this podcast. Together with my husband, Vince, and our partner, Bill, we have grown our company, Window Works, from the ground up. So I know and I understand the challenges you face in running your interior design business. I also know that your talent alone isn't enough to ensure your success. So on this podcast, we talk about strategies and practical steps to help you grow your business. But make no mistake about it, we have our share of fun here too, mixed in with those aha moments that I love so much. This isn't fluff. Nobody has time for that. Whether you are a new interior designer or a seasoned designer, I am here to help you create and to manage the kind of interior design firm that you dream of. It's straight talk and it's action. Are you ready? Let's get started. Hi, welcome to a well-designed business. It's Power Talk Friday. Before I get to today's show, what do you do when the client or vendor is wrong? I want to mention two things. The first is I really want to say thank you for to every one of you that has either texted me, Facebook messaged me, Instagram message, DM message, or emailed me saying how much you have liked these last few solo shows. Um, It's really, really very special that you take the time to do that, and I really do appreciate it. And you guys all know that sales is my jam, so I love talking about these topics, and it just makes me so happy that you're enjoying it, all right? And then that brings me to the second thing that I wanted to mention again. If you are liking these shows and if you need help learning how to sell more effectively, if you need help navigating these topics, the conflicts, the conversations that all swirl around sales and negotiation, then I'm looking out for you because I am launching a live group coaching program this summer, okay? It's called Sales for Creatives. All right. We're going to cover eight very specific topics. We will have live Q&A. We will have plenty of time for talking about the actual conflicts and the challenges with clients that you have. And like I said, could be with vendors. Um, It could be with employees. And I also will have live office hours each week in the Facebook group so that you get more opportunity to ask specific questions. Okay. Now, and I'm just going to say, if you were at Luann Live, it's about the conversation, you know how riled up and how passionate I can get when it comes to talking about charging more money and teaching you how to make more money. Okay. At the event, they actually said that I was practically levitating off the stage when I was talking about it. Okay. It's pretty hysterical when I think back on it, but that is the thing. I do get riled up because I know you leave money on the table simply because your sales skills are not up to snuff. That's the truth. Okay. Because when you learn to be a better salesperson, you actually not only sell more for sure, but more importantly, you sell at higher margins and that's what makes you more money. Okay, that's when you really start to run a profitable business. So I hope that you will join me and learn how to close more projects and how to make more money on every single project. I've scheduled two sessions. This is summer 2019 that we're talking about, if you're listening in the future. Each session will run eight weeks. You can pick the one that suits you better, whether it's the summer session that starts in just seven weeks on July 10th, or the fall session, which will begin on September 11th. All right. I know some of you have kids and are off for the summer and would rather not tackle this now, but I also have my friends in Australia that are in their winter, and so maybe it's perfect timing for you. Whichever is best for you. The thing to know is the price And the cutoff for early bird registration is the same for both sessions, okay? Meaning if you want to join the summer session at the lowest price it will ever be or the fall session at the lowest price it will ever be, that price is $23.95 and that date is from now until June 13, 2019, okay, period. That's it. All right. And after that, it goes up to twenty eight ninety five. And here's the thing. If you wait until the week before either session to sign up, it goes to thirty two fifty. Take one guess why. All right. I'm going to tell you why. The truth is you already know if you want to do this with me. 
right? You've heard about what it is. You know me. You either trust me to be able to teach this to you or you don't. You know what the topic is. You either know you need to learn it or you don't. And when you heard about it, you either said to yourself, oh, heck yes, I want to do this. I need this. And I know Luann can teach it to me. Or you went, eh, I could take it or leave it, right? I mean, that's, that's what happens. Think about it and get quiet with yourself. Where are you? Which camp are you in? So here's the thing. The price is structured to do what? To get you to decide, to move you to decide right now, okay? So if you are in the camp of, heck yes, I want this, ask yourself. If you're on the fence, ask yourself, do you think that with one project, you can make it worth your time or money to be in this course. Do you believe working with me for eight weeks, I can help you sell one more project than you would have on your own? Do you think I can help you ask for and get more money on a project? How about on every project that you have coming up? Well, I believe that I can. And if you do too, don't wait. Grab your spot for whichever session works best in your schedule. And don't forget, I'm talking about during the two months that we spend together, can you move the needle and bring in a project that you might not have or bring in a project at a higher gross margin? But the fact is, is once we do this course together and you spend these 10 hours with me, you know, sort of you're going to keep using these techniques over and over and over. So all throughout the year, you're going to make more money. All right. Head over to Salesforce, salesforcreatives.com. Okay. Sales for creatives.com and you'll learn more about the course topics each week and you register for the program all right and who knows maybe i'll even levitate right through the zoom meeting for you <laughs> i wouldn't be surprised you got to be there to find out though <laughs> okay so today we're talking about what do we do when the, we know the client is wrong right? Knowing how to handle conflicts successfully is critical to the success of our business, to the health of our business, right? I've shared with you many times one of my go-to mantras, do I want to be right or do I want to get what I want? This little phrase has helped me over the years navigate conflicts with clients, vendors, employees, and I mean, I'm going to be real, with the Vincennes too, right? <laughs> it's a very good North Star sentence. Do I want to be right or do I want to get what I want? Think about it, okay? Now, what, what do you do when you know the client is wrong, right? Well, last week on Power Talk Friday, episode number 430, we talked about what do we do when we're wrong. We delivered a rug and the client told us that, we didn't, that they didn't like it. We looked in the mirror and we owned the fact that the rug was, in fact, too small for the room right? And we took care of it. And we had all these little steps on the things that we wanted to cover in getting that conflict to resolution. So if you missed Power Talk Friday, number 430, go back and check that out. Now, today though, we're going to talk about when we do everything right, but the client doesn't like it, right? Um, and I'm going to use a, an example, like this is like a little mini case study of one of the things that happened at Window Works. Actually, it was this past winter, okay? So, Here's what happened. Billy is at an install. He is putting up, he happens to be right in the moment, putting up the fourth of four valances in a client's living room. The, the wife has been home with them all day. And all of a sudden, the husband walks in the door from work and walks right to the living room and immediately yells out, I hate these valances. And the funny thing is, is Billy, when he told the story, he said he really thought that the husband was joking because he didn't say hi. He didn't say hi to his wife. He didn't say hi to Billy. He didn't say, oh, what's going on? He didn't stand there and think about it. He literally walked in the room and like bellowed that. How's that for a word? Bellowed. <laughs> um, and, and so it was sort of like he thought he was doing the opposite thing. Like, these are amazing, but I'm going to pretend I hate them for a joke, right? No, it was, it was, it was real. He hated them. And it was really pretty crazy. And so what happens? There's certain things that we got to go into motion on here, right? The first one is, is that I have 100% confidence in Billy's demeanor, his nature. He is always calm. He is always non-confrontational. He's never going to turn around and look at somebody and tell them 
anything disrespectful or try and he's never going to look at them and go, you're crazy. They're perfect. He's just simply going to accept whatever you tell him. He's going to hear it. He's going to give you full attention and he's going to make sure that you know that you've been heard and he's going to end every single conversation in this type of conversation with, Hey, we're going to take care of this for you. I'm going to call Luann. We're going to figure this out. Don't you worry. And why is that? That's because window works is very clear on their core values and our commitment to 110% customer service. So we don't have to all wonder what's going to happen. Okay. We don't always know how each of us is going to handle something. Billy doesn't know what my decisions might be. I might not know what Billy's going to actually say, but we're all very clear that our end goal is always that we will do whatever it takes to make you happy. Okay. So the second thing is that happened. So number one, he's calm, confrontational and leaves them with that thought. The second thing is he left them up. And the reason that he left the valances up, number one, is because he already knew the wife liked them very much. He was on the fourth one. This is, you know, two hours into the work. And she had already said how beautiful they were, how beautiful the fabric was, blah, blah, blah. So he decides to leave them up so that because there's a tiny little window there that maybe, you know, there's going to be a little crossover here where she's going to work on them and say, I love them. I love them. You're crazy. Can I keep them? Right. Um, The other thing is too, let's be real. If this had happened on the first balance and there was two hours worth of work to do and the husband hated them, we're not shoving anything down anybody's throat here. Right. So he would have said, would you like me to put the others up? And maybe when you see them finished in the room, you'll have a different opinion. And if some clients will say yes to that and others would say no, that's where the nuance comes in. And so that's where you have to really listen to your gut and know what the right thing to do is. But in this case, he left them up. Okay. And by the way, if this guy had said, take them down, he would have, he would have wanted to leave them up and he would have tried very diplomatically to say, Hey, blah, blah, blah. But push come to shove. If the guy was like, get them down, he would have taken them down. Okay. So there's a little reality in everything that we do. We know what we're striving for. We know where our goals are and when we're trying to maneuver and lead a situation. But we also know that the customer is our, you know, what I say above, do I want to be right? Or do I want to get what I want? Okay. All right. Now here's the other thing. In this particular situation, there were a couple of things that were going on that I decided I would not make the first phone call, okay? Very often, I'm going to tell you that the first phone call is yours to make as the owner of your company. But there, this is why, again, the, this course has got to be a live course because it's like, well, if this, then that, if this, then that, and I need to be able to talk to you about these nuances, right? So in this particular situation, I opted to have Adriana call her first, rather than me. And here's why, the couple of reasons why. Number one, I think it was already Thursday when this happened, if I remember it clearly. It was definitely Wednesday and more likely, it was was definitely at least Wednesday is what I want to say, and possibly it was Thursday. Okay, so that matters to me. It's towards the end of the week, right? I'll explain why. The second thing is, is that I know from Billy's conversation that she loved it. Now, I don't know if she's going to wake up in the morning and love it. I don't know if he's going to, you know, kind of have an influence on her, but I know her genuine reaction was she loved it. She had expressed it to Billy. It wasn't like she was middle of the road. Okay. And then the third criteria and the third little thing that I took into consideration when I decided to have Adriana call her is that this is a repeat customer. I have done four or five rooms in her home. I've done uh, several rooms in her sister's home and I have done her nephew's entire townhouse. And so I know I have a lot of cred with these people. I know I have a lot of goodwill with these people. Okay. So I decided to handle it like this. Have Adriana call her, say, Hey, Billy came back to the showroom. My goodness. We heard, you know, that your husband isn't happy with everything. And I just want to make sure that you know that we're going to do everything we can to make sure we take care of this for you and that you're happy. You know that, right? And You wait for the yes, I know that, right? The second thing she does is I tell her, tell her that I'm out of the office, that's why you called, and that I'm scheduled 
the next day or two, but you want to get me up to see her as soon as possible because, you know, you're a hundred percent sure that I'm going to want to see them for myself. I'm going to want to talk to you about how can we resolve this problem. So can I have Luann come out on Monday? This way they're in her house all weekend long. Okay. So the thing about that is, is I want them to be there for several days, but I did not want her to go without the contact from her office on the day that this happened. The second thing is the next step is that I'm going to call the next day. So I'm not calling the first day, but I'm going to call the next day. And the reason that I'm going to do that is number one, to make sure that she knows that I know what happened, that this isn't like on Monday, I'm going to wake up and be like, oh, hey, they weren't happy, right? I'm on top of things. My team has told me what's going on. Okay. The other thing is, is that I want to take her temperature a day later. So I don't want a temperature the first day. That's why I didn't call the first day. The first day I know the temperature, here's what it is. She's hot, he's cold. It's easy. Billy already told me that. I want to know her temperature the next day. I want to know, is she still hot and still loves it? Or is she starting to move to the dark side? Is she starting to be like, yeah, and now I see what he's saying and what he doesn't like and blah, 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 right? Because it happens. Okay, he's her husband. She loves him. She respects him. You know, his opinion means something to her. So I want to know where that is. And the other thing I want to know is, does he still hate it the next day? Right? Is maybe he coming over to her side? Is he like, well, you know what? You really do love it that much. All right, whatever. It's the living room. I never go in there anyway. Right? So I want this, this temperature taking, okay, um, the next day. And I also want the chance to kind of go over and recap how we came to this selection. Because for this particular order, there was a particular conversation that she and I had when we placed the order. And I want that conversation back on the table. And this is what it was. What happened was she and I got together to look at fabrics two, three, four times. And we finally narrowed it down to these three fabrics that we liked. And she said to me, I want to see what my husband thinks about the three fabrics. And I said to her, okay, fine. But before we left that meeting, each of us said what was our favorite fabric. And and we both agreed on our favorite fabric being actually the one that's up on the on the wall, right? So that was that was number one, it was clear. And what was also clear is when I went to meet her to do the final invoicing, she said to me, You're not gonna believe it. He picked the same one we picked. And we were both surprised because this was this like sort of, you know, really not bold, bold by our standards, but by their standards, it was a bold geometric print. And I said to her, my good, I remember us saying, my goodness, I'm so psyched that he liked this one too, because I never expected him to like this one. I thought he was going to want us to go with the more conservative. And I'm so excited because I think this is going to look great. And she said the same thing. And she made a point to say, and I didn't tell him which one we liked. I just said, these are the three facts fabrics and he picked it. And I remember looking up at her and meeting her eyes and being like, wow, that's crazy. And she's like, I know. I said, well, we don't need to think about anything else. We all agree. This was like practically a verbatim thing and it was memorable. So in this temperature conversation, I want to bring this out again right? I want to bring this out because I want us to have it on the table as a little soft cushion reminder that nobody was coerced into this fabric. And I also want to see if she's going to tell me that he doesn't remember that, right? So this is so, so the thing is I don't go, uh, you know, well, he picked it, right? I just bring it up casually. And I just say to her, you know, I'm talking to her and I'm saying, oh, Billy told me what happened, you know, and she's like, I know. And I said, we made a little joke how Billy thought he was kidding at first, you know, blah, blah, blah. And just say, um, and then I just go into, I said, you know, it's just so crazy because I just remember how happy you and I were when blindly he picked as his first choice, the, his first choice, the same as ours, right? And I just leave it there and see what she says. Because this is where she would backpedal if she was going to. And she didn't, which was great. Okay. She just went, I know. And she goes, and I said that to him. I reminded him, like, you picked it. And so that was also great information. Number one, the good information is that she remembers a conversation. But number two, she put it to him. And number three, he said, I know. 
Then you follow it up with, I know, but I don't care. <laughs> I know, but I hate it. But there's nobody playing a game here, right? See, that's very important because the next step for resolution is very different if the customer is not going to play by the rules, right? Whole nother thing, okay? So, but still, I've got some nuance ahead of me. I've got some sales work ahead of me because I want to get paid, right? And so when I've got somebody that is just looking at me flat out saying, I hate it, it's I'm, I'm now, what I'm trying to teach you now is I'm setting up all the way along and reminder, the reminders and putting back in front of us all of our agreements in a nice, com, you know, conversational way, but I'm getting agreement on our previous agreements because these are all little markers so that when I come to my resolution for them, she's not going to be able to come back with me and say, but, because I'm making sure there's no buts before I get there, right? Okay. So once, you know, we're done. And we have this little conversation. Um, I say to her, you know, terrific. You know, I'm going to see you Monday. I can't wait. I'm really looking forward to seeing them myself in person. And don't you worry. You know I'm going to ta- take care of this for you. Okay. So now what happens um, when I get there on Monday? All right. So I learned, by the way, like I said to you, that I'm, I can expect to be dealing with reasonable people, but I still have to figure out how I'm going to handle the situation, all right? When I get there, I kind of go over it again. I kind of, you know, conversationally bring this funny story up again, just so that now it's been another three days, you know, has anything changed? I'm temperature taking again, and I'm getting agreement again, that we all are agreeing that this is how it happened. So I do that again on Monday when I'm at the house, all right? Then I, once I have, this probably took 15 or 20 minutes, right? Because we're going to first talk and then I'm going to, I said to her, and if I, by the way, if I didn't like it any more than the husband did, I would have just said, you know, I know you love it, but I don't love it either. And, and the, and the reason why I would say that is because I already know it's not staying, right? It's not staying up. He hates it. I already know it's coming down. I know what I want the solution to be, but I don't know I'm going to get that solution yet. But I do know I'm not leaving it up there. So if I were to walk in and actually not like it either, without making her feel stupid, I would give the agreement to him. This way she knows I'm being truthful. So, and I said, you know, and so instead what I say in that sort of a situation is, you know, I wish I could tell you that I agree with him, but I agree with you. I love it. You see, so it's like a, it, it, you hear me, right? Okay. So we do that. That's 10 or 15 minutes. And I restate that, you know, he picked it, la, la, la. So what I do is I say, I look, I know he picked it expecting to like it. Heck, we picked it and we like it, but he works hard for his money. And if he doesn't like it, we're not going to leave it here. So this is what I propose. You know, this is a business, right? And that I do this so that we can make money on this, right? And she laughs and she says, of course she does. And then I laugh and I say, so here's the thing. I made my money on this project, right? How would you feel if we selected something new and I sold it to you for my net cost? I won't add profit. I know he picked this carefully and fully expected to like it. So let's get something up here that he does like. And I don't need to make profit two times, just the one time as would have been expected by both of us. How does that sound to you? And she said, yes, that sounds great. But here's the thing, okay? I come back at her one more time and I say, do you really think it's fair? Do you understand and know that if I had made the mistake, If I had written the wrong pattern down, or if I was the only one who liked this fabric and you both together said, Luann, you're out of your mind with this fabric, you know me, right? You've worked with Window Works before. You know that I would have done that over again at my full expense, right? And she says, yes, okay? So that's what I want. I want her to agree that my offer is fair. And I want her to know that I would have owned the whole thing if it was mine to own. Because the neck sort of puts it back like, yeah, if it was all her, I know her, she would have done the whole thing at her expense. So, you know, we have to be good people too. This is part our problem. So we have to share that expense. That's what that's saying, right? That's what I'm, I'm putting there in between the lines right there. Like, 
I'm a grown up. If I make a mistake, I own it. Are you the same? So that's the little pressure that I'm applying in a very, very nice, subtle way. Don't you agree? (laughs) Okay. So the thing is, Once I get her agreement, then I say to her, okay, terrific. I really want you, uh, let's go over the next steps. That's what I say. Uh, Next I go, all right, let's go over the next steps. This is what I propose. I would like for you to run this by your husband and give him the chance to see and decide if he agrees that my solution is fair too, okay? Second, I would like to ask you to pay the balance due on this order. We agree that this order was executed and delivered as we originally agreed. So if you pay my balance and when you pay my balance on this order, I will then close this order out. Third, I will select new fabrics. We will look at them together. We'll have the chance to see if we like them and find one that he likes. And once we all agree on a new fabric, then I will price it for you. And then you will have the chance to say, yes, I agree that this is a fair price, that this is good, and that this is the fabric we want. And when we do that and we get to that point, then I'm going to ask you for a 50% deposit and we'll start the new order over again. How does that sound to you? And she says, that sounds great. Okay. So I'm laying out for her what's going to happen. All right. When I leave, I turn and I say to her, do you think you'll have the chance to speak with your husband tonight? And if she says yes, I say, terrific. Can I call you tomorrow afternoon to be sure we're all on the same page? Okay. Now, why do I do this? Because I want this. Here's the thing. I want the opportunity for a phone call the next day right? Why? Number one, I do want to know if we're in agreement. I want to know if the solution is going to go forward, okay? But mostly, I want to collect that balance due the next day. That's my big reason for a phone call the next day, not two days, not four days, not five days, okay? So that's why I don't say to her, why don't you call your husband now and see if he agrees with the solution? Because I don't want to present this meaty solution that they have to digest and then divert their energies and mental energies to processing am I paying for this balance due? I want them two separate things. So tonight they're going to decide, yes, Luann's fair as the day is long, let's go ahead. And tomorrow I'm going to say, boom, can I collect the, the, the balance due? Okay. So the next day, the phone call is very simple. Hey, how are you? How did it go last night? Did you talk with your husband? And stop talking. Just listen. He went, it went great. He thanks you for coming up with the solution. He says, just please don't pick a geometric pattern this time. <laughs> okay. And I say to her, great, I'll start looking for new samples today. And it's okay for Adriana to use the card we have on the order to process the balance, right? And she says, yes, go ahead. Okay. So here's the thing. Why else do I want that first order paid now? Because there is no point in me looking for new samples, new fabrics, if two things. If number one, I think I'm going to have a problem collecting money out of them. And number two, we actually don't have the solution. So I want to know both those things on that next day phone call that the husband is on board and that I'm getting my money. Because if the husband isn't on board, what is the point of me spending, you know, six hours looking for a fabric and then following up with her next week with the fabrics and now to come in and say, well, you know, by the way, you know, he really doesn't love the solution. So, you know, thanks for picking these fabrics, but how are we going to work this out? I want to know that before. Okay. I want to know that before I spend any more time, we're taking care of the business part of this process before I take care of the fluff part of this process. That's the bottom line on it. Okay. All righty. So the thing is that any single conversation goes a different way and there's a different way to handle it. That's the whole thing about selling. It's listening. It's being on your feet. It's, um, really, really looking for what it is that is upsetting somebody and getting to the bottom of it, all right? But for this particular case study, let's recap, all right? A call went to her the exact same day there was a problem. In this case, the call was from Adriana, but in some cases, it would have needed to be me or you as the principal, okay? Number two, I called her, even though a meeting was set up with her, so that she knew, A, that I cared, that I was informed, that my team has me in the loop, and that 
I can start to gather some more information in this conversation, okay? I'm listening more than I'm talking in this conversation. And with this information, I'm beginning to formulate what I think is going to be a resolution that we all can live with, all right? The third thing is in the appointment, I am again beginning it by listening more than talking. I'm learning how upset they are. I'm taking the temperature. I'm wondering and seeing if they're changing or shifting where the blame is going. And I'm also giving them a chance to say, you know, her to say to me, we have an idea on how to resolve this. Okay. But in the absence of that, what I do is I repeat to her all the areas that we'd agreed on. Okay. In this case, she loved it. I loved it. And the three of us loved it when we played the order. Okay. The next thing is I'm going to offer a solution that includes the rationale for my solution so that she can buy into the solution I want to have happen. All right. So my rationale for that was simply putting the elephant out of the closet in the middle of the room. Look, this is a business and I make money on, on every transaction. However, I'm giving her my rationale now, my justification for this solution. I don't need to make profit on your mistake. I don't say those words, but that's what I'm saying. I don't need to make profit on your mistake. I'm giving you some latitude to be able to make a mistake, but I don't need to capitalize on it. And that's what I'm sharing in the way I described it up there, okay? The next thing I do, the seventh thing I do is I tell her the next steps, which include how I will get paid both on the first project and the second project. I will get paid for the first project before we start the second one, and I will get a 50% deposit on the, on the second one before we start it, okay? Don't leave this out. You don't leave it out from, like I said above, you know, you need to know that the money is going to be handled before you put more time and hours into this because if they say yes to your solution, but there's no money attached, they might just be saying yes, right? You know it's yes if they go along and make your payments, okay? But the other thing is that reason, other reason that you want to bring this up is because they are wondering it they're wondering it. And yes, some very strong, direct speaking people will look at you right off the bat and say, okay, so you're, you want to you know, find new fabrics. You want to see something that we like better. And if you've left off the conversation about money, like, like they're going to come at you, like I'm going to come at you and say, yeah, but how's the money part going to work? Like, what are you expecting from me on that? Right. But a lot of people aren't going to do that. They're just going to be like, oh, okay, you're going to find new fabrics. And then husband comes home that night and he says, what's, what's going on? Well, she's going to find new fabrics. And he's going to say, well, how, you know, what's happening? Do we have to pay for this one? Do we have to pay for that one? And she's been like, well, I don't know. You see, that's too loosey goosey. That's too gray. It's not good for them. There's no confidence for them. Okay. So you don't serve you or them by not bringing up the money part of the conversation. Okay. It's your job to bring it up. It's so much better if you're the one who brings it up because you are the leader in this conversation. You are leader in this entire transaction. Okay. So So be the one to lead it and do not hide from this. Okay. All right. So, um, then what you, the last thing is you want agreement from the spouse, let them talk in private. If that's the, the dynamic and blah, 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 you know, you, you don't need to ask her to call him in the spot. Like I said earlier. Okay. All right. Those are the things. And as I said a moment ago, you change one response from the husband, one response from the wife, one detail of this scenario and boom, we're down a whole different, you know, conversation and a whole different path and possibly a whole different solution, right? That, in that situation, that was the solution I wanted. I felt that that was the, the fairest solution of all. Um, and they agreed, but I could have been met with resistance in which case I would have had to round my wagons and come back at it again, another way. Um, and I might've had to alter what I wanted to do only because my ultimate goal is to be leaving that client 100% satisfied. Okay. You see my ultimate goal isn't to win, right? Do I want to be right? Or do I want to get what I want? My ultimate, ultimate guiding goal is to have that client say, holy cow, window works is amazing. And so a lot of times I get there where all of us are intact. I've got my money. They've got their product. Everybody's good. But just so you know, I will leave my money on the table 
if it is that if that's the only way to make them happy. Now, Inside Voice is not happy about that. Inside Voice is really crazy, and you can imagine the car ride home with Luann talking to herself. But Outside Voice will do it, and will do it with a smile on, because that's the way it goes. That's how you build your reputation, okay? And here's the thing. I have enough profit in every single project to be able to do this. I'm not working at a 25% or a 30 or a 40% margin, you see? I'm working at a gross profit margin of 67%. So what does that mean? If I'm selling, if something costs me $100, I'm selling it for like $267, you see? So even when I do the next one at wholesale cost, I still have money in that project because I'm running my business for profit. I'm running my business so that I can be in business. Okay, so you need to think about that. And and also, too, I will tell you this. When I say I will do this at my net cost, my net cost includes my installer going up to install it. So it's not just my net cost from the workroom. It's the net cost of the fabric, the shipping of that fabric, the labor at the workroom, the shipping from the workroom, and Billy's time to go up and install it. That is my net cost. Okay, so be clear and understand what your net cost on a project is. Okay, and then that's what I gave her. Now, I didn't give her invoices. I didn't give her bills. You know, I have credibility because I have been a leader throughout this process with her. So there's no reason for her to question me. Okay, so I do have to say. This does not, this is not a skill set that just, you know, is plopped in your brain. It's not like being able to, you know, I don't know, pick paint colors. I don't even know if that's a skill process that's plopped in your brain. (laughs) Of course, we have Maria Killam who teaches us how to do it and Lori Zawaya, right? So I guess it's not something that's plopped in your brain. I need a better example. How about just doing math, right? That's plopped in people's brains, not mine. (laughs) But it is a skill that comes from many, many years of practice, but it comes from being able to have conversations and, you know, being able to ask questions about these nuances. If this, then what? If you say that, then they say this, then I say what? Okay. So we can always start with the principles, but we do need that um, space to learn and to be taught and to understand how to navigate it. So um, I love it. You know I love it. You can hear it in my voice. I absolutely love it. It's like playing chess for me. You say this, what am I going to say? You move that way, where am I going to move? Okay, and I'm, I'm literally always studying it in exactly the way an outstanding chess player studies the game that they're in. You ever, you know, you've seen that, right? You don't play chess and when the other person is making their move, you know, you're watching TV. No, you're looking at that board while they're taking their time to figure out their move and you're doing two things. You're anticipating what their next move might be and you're looking for the hole or the way in or the the place where you can make a move. And that's exactly what every single conversation with your client is about. It's about paying attention to the words they use, the words they don't use, the way they present, the reactions that they have, and it's always you looking for how you can both achieve a win-win. That's the thing. There's right back to the top of the, the program. Do I want to be right or do I want to get what I want? And you have to first figure out what you want. And for me and for Window Works is we want every customer to be satisfied. So I want to be right. And if I can be right and have what I want, that's awesome. But if I can only have what I want, then that's, that's okay too. Because I've decided what I will do and what I will not do. All right? So hopefully... This is helpful to you, all right? Um, I have to say, in 30-plus years in business, I think I've faced every single version 
of this story that you can imagine. And the fact is, I can't record a 10 hour podcast in order to go over if she had said this, or if she had said that, or he had done that. How about I'm sure one of you right now is out there saying, well, what do I do if I don't have an Adriana? I know. I know somebody's thinking that. And that's the type of thing that we're going to be able to do in the live coaching course. You're going to be able to say to me, what do I do if I don't have an Adriana? And then we're going to figure it out. What are you going to do if you don't have an Adriana, right? So... If you would like to up your sales game, if you want to be more confident in charging more, closing more, and being better at getting to win-win solutions with your clients and your vendors, decide today to join my live coaching course, salesforcreatives.com. Okay? Salesforcreatives.com. Um, decide. Decide to be excellent. Decide to be a sales pro for your firm. Thank you so much for joining me again today. This podcast is a production of Window Works, your resource for custom window treatments and awnings. To learn how we can help you on your next interior design project, go to www.windowworks-nj.com. And if you're interested in working with me on your business, either through masterminds or one-on-one coaching, or you want to know how to get my book, The Making of a Well-Designed Business, or you just want to know what's going on in the podcast land, and where I'm going to be. All of that is found at luannnigara.com. Thank you so much. Have an excellent day.